Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today we're going to be showing you the first trial in the All About Mechanics series. The dungeons have been done apart from the new DLC ones, so they're coming very soon. The arenas are already underway and now we're into trials as well. We are going to do these just like the dungeon series where everything is done in order um, of release. But we are of course going to do the Craglawn trials first. This one is Veteran Arthurian Archive. We're going to show you all the mechanics, going to show you the hard mode as well. We're using two tanks, two healers and a mixture of DPS. Here we go. Now, when you first get into Alfurian Archive, you are going to be greeted with a bunch of ads. So, at the top of the stairs, there is loads of fire going on on the way up. So, you do want to put on a heal or maybe a damage shield. Keep your tanks kind of using protective buffs on the way up so you don't get nuked. And what your tanks need to do is dart ahead if they can and grab these all in a little bunch. Now, they can be chained, so they can be manipulated and CC'd and all the rest of it. As you can see, there's some of the groups standing on the stairs. They just had to force their way through. Do not stay on the stairs. If you stay on the stairs, you will die to the fire. Up here, it's safe apart from what the ads will put down. Now, each one of these can explode when they die, so don't stand under their feet. Otherwise, it will get really, really messy really quickly. But as long as the aggro is on the tank, they shouldn't be that much of a problem. If they do go loose, however, don't run around the room, let the tank get them back and just hold block for the time being. Otherwise, you will get in trouble. They fire off some nasty light attacks. Now, once those are dead, you can go through this door and there's loads of little whirly ice winds running around in the room. If you get caught by these, you'll be immobilized on the spot and you'll have to dodge roll to get out. But if you can avoid them, then obviously that saves you a lot of hassle. So just try and get around them as best you can. If you do have mist form on, by the way, you can go straight through them, but... That's not for everybody. Now these, again, need to be grabbed by the tank ASAP. They have some nasty cleaves. They do need to be turned away from the group. So try to save your ultimates on these ones. Don't use too much um, expensive stuff. Just get them down gradually, and then you can save your ultimates for the next pull, because the next pull is quite nasty. Once they're done, continue up the stairs, and this is where you get kind of force-fed your first most important mechanic in fact for the for the first boss that we're going to see so as you go up these stairs you'll start getting zapped with lightning and you can see there's a big big light there big beam of light if you stand in it you won't take any damage from the lightning that is crucial to note so pay attention to that while you're going through this pool here you want both tanks in grab everything as quickly as possible everybody else needs to get as much air of effect down as possible in the middle of this fight and focus that overcharger the overcharger is really really nasty and it'll put some wicked lightning aoe's down on the ground which can actually wipe groups out so make sure this is where you use your ultimates and try and burn them down as quickly as possible once the overcharger is dealt with that's when you want to then go for the chain spinner because he can knock people down as well now the lightning as you can see is on me and i'm not moving everyone else is moving away from me if I start running around the room, I'm going to zap everyone because that AoE is connected to myself. Now, this is where we test the sense of direction of the players. This can go horribly wrong, so pay attention. We are going to use five different directions here. Front, back, left, right, and upper right. So all you need to remember. Front, back, left, right, upper right. Whichever one of those locations are called out by your group is where you need to run. The rest of the time, you need to stand here. The boss should be turned away from the group and it's basically a stack and burn fest until the mechanics kick in. There's some nasty light attacks, so make sure you're blocking those if you're a squish tank. And of course, when he does this pulsar effect, as the group, make sure you do block. Because those little lightning bolts that go across the floor there will wipe you out if you don't do so. Or unless you have a damage shield on, which would be also okay. Now, as you can see here, upper right, that is the location we are calling that. Front, back, left, right, upper right. You saw the light come in. That is your protection from the lightning, which you were shown a little while ago on the run-up to this boss. So as you can see, where our tank is, that's the front. Where my back is, that's the back. Left and right is obvious, and in upper right, you just saw. Now, just bear in mind, of course, when you go back into the middle, like we just did, he does his pulsar again, so get ready to block that. And every time you see his hands raised, that's where you want to look for the light. And where is it? It's at the front, but I couldn't see it properly. You see, there's a very faint circle on the ground. That is because not everybody can see the light. You need to coordinate as a group and you need to make sure that people are calling out when they see it. Do it very, very fast because if you do get caught inside the lightning, you will take damage over time every one second and it will be stronger and stronger and stronger every single tick until it's basically a one shot. So you do not want to get caught by it for more than about two or three seconds if you can help it. As you can see, left, everybody comes together, stays on the pad where the light is, which again, I couldn't see. And then when he's finished, everybody gets back in. Watch for the pulsar, block, nuke the boss. 
Now, this isn't a DPS race. There is no actual requirement for this. It takes as long as it takes, but that process will be repeated over and over and over and over. It's that simple. Again, he's got his hands up, look for the light. It's behind us, so someone will be calling back or behind. And now everybody's safe until he goes back into his normal state. Now, just to point out here, of course, you do still want to be doing some damage while you are standing in those light circles or the pads or whatever you want to call them. When you are protected by those lights, try to do whatever range damage you can as a DPS. And as a healer, always keep heals down on the run to there so people can actually survive while they're trying to get out of trouble. It's a very, very straightforward fight, but this is very easy to wipe on if people aren't paying attention, if they don't block those pulsars, or of course, if people can't see the lights. So you don't want one person calling them out, you want several. I know generally in trials you want one person talking and not the rest, but in this particular fight, whoever sees it needs to call it because it can go horribly, horribly wrong. Now, as you can see here, there's four million health left on the boss. We are still going to the lights. Follow the mechanics. Don't stand there and nuke the boss and think you'll get away with it. Those damage ticks coming in will kill you. Now, once it's dead, there are three pad locations. Four pads on the left, four pads in the middle, four pads on the right. Now, you want a tank to go either side, so left and right. You want a healer to go either side, left and right. And what you do with the DPS is up to you. But you want your most survivable group on the right-hand side because we are all going to end up in different places. The right-hand side will have an overcharger to deal with, which is really, really nasty, and it can sometimes try and nuke you while you're coming through the load screen. The left-hand side has to deal with a large ad as well, and the middle, as you can see here, we were getting attacked in the load screen, has lots and lots of tiny ads. Now, these do need to be dealt with because they will keep spawning over and over and over until the other two sides are finished. So while we're killing these, the left side is killing their ad and the right side is killing their overcharger on their side. If you are on the right side, make sure you take some protective buffs or bonuses or resistance buffs or shields or heals or something. You have to make sure you survive the overcharger. Otherwise, the other group's going to have to go and kill your ad after they've done theirs. As you can see, they keep spawning. We've deliberately took stamina into the middle here. Yeah, of course you can sneak through the portal, but that's not what we were trying to show. You do have to deal with these occasionally. So it helps if you've got some stamina people in there to so give out some heals. As you can see, there's three of us here. We've all got vigor and they do stack. So it's really, really handy. We just pump out vigor every so often while dealing with these and we're waiting for the other groups to finish. Now the bridges have come down on the left and the right side and all the pads are now lit up, which means everybody has completed their task. There's the two sides are now coming back down and they will meet us in the middle. Every single person now has to get their own pad. And once they've done that, we will be teleported back to where the boss was a moment ago. Now, we need to run across the bridge that is now formed because we've successfully completed this task. And we are going to have a rather nasty ad pull. Now, this is very important. If you do not focus the overcharges, you are in trouble. So make sure you kill them first or as fast as you possibly can. Do not run around the room like a headless chicken. Let the tanks do all the pulling and stack on this little rock that we're now going to stand on. This is where you want to put your ultimates down. This is where you want to put the most of your heals. And this is where the tanks will be manipulating the enemies to put them in place. There are chain spinners which do need to die. And there are overchargers. The nullifiers just need to be interrupted. And they will die passively anyway unless the last one's left. But the overcharger is your primary target. This is where you're going to want Novas, Damage Shields, take all the synergies you possibly can, and keep the heals coming. You'll notice from time to time that there are Vigors being thrown out. That is because I've instructed the Stamina DPS to help the healers, and every so often fire off a Vigor to keep up those passive heals. The Overcharger Lightning is going to be on the group, and it is really nasty, so you've got to keep a lot of mitigation and survivability up in this particular phase. Yes, of course, you can spread out and deal with them in the room rather than on this rock. But to be honest, since they all pretty much spawn here, the big ones, you can mostly AoE kill the majority of the, the nasty stuff. As you can see, the nullifier kind of sticks out to the side. The tank can run out of range and bring that into the middle because it'll chase them. But there's no real need where they're sitting at the moment because we have kind of got it covered. Now, this is where it gets tricky, because we have a boss coming up here, and I've seen lots of people wipe here by doing things silly. And what I mean by that is they try and get too cocky when the phases kick in, and they try and avoid them, and it doesn't always end up paying off. But that will be explained once you get into the fight. Key point here, everybody gets on a pad, we get teleported downstairs. 
Yes, of course, I've seen hundreds of people jump off that edge to get to here quicker. Nine times out of ten, someone's got a slow horse and somebody dies. Don't be that guy. Just get on the teleporter and land here. Now, this boss needs to be turned to the left with the main tank, and the off tank is actually going to taunt the adds. Now, the adds are ranged for the most part, except for the chain spinners. They're nullifiers. And they can be quite tricky. So what the tank needs to do is taunt it and then run past the boss so that the ad tries to chase them and then get stuck in the stack in the middle. Otherwise, because they're ranged, they won't come in. So just bear that in mind if you're a tank. In the meantime, this is actually pretty much a stack and burn. Now, that is until it gets to 75%. You'll see at the moment it's around 80. In the next 5%, he's gonna initiate a new mechanic. And what that is, of course, is his sit-down mechanic, where there will be rocks in the air and they'll be thrown at players and they will knock them down and or kill them. So, as you can see, we've all spread out and we're holding block. If you can block cast, but what I mean by that is you have skills that can be cast while blocking, then this is your opportunity to do so. Failing that, just stand there, unblock, and receive the heals from the healers. If you drop your guard, you are likely to get hit, you're likely to get knocked down, and you're likely to die. So maintain your stamina for those phases. Now this is rinse repeat. Ads will spawn consistently and of course he will constantly sit down. As you can see, he's sitting down again. So what do we do? Spread out, find a space, stay in the heels. Hold block. Do not get knocked over by those rocks. And this process is repeated throughout the entire fight. The off tank and the main tank are the only ones that should really get away with not blocking because they can survive through it. Everybody else will get stuffed. You can see there the tank is manipulating the adds. We're not even focusing them, so they are dying to AoE based on where they're being put. However, if you have a very low DPS group, it's not a problem. It's not a race. There is no enrage mechanic where if you don't kill it quick enough, you're dead. But you could get overwhelmed with adds. So if you are one of those groups, then you should focus the ad first, then the boss. Otherwise, you will get overwhelmed with them. So... Again, if you're in a group that can really, really handle a lot of damage, sure, go nuts and kill them in AoE. If not, kill the adds first, then go back onto the boss. Kill the adds first, then go back onto the boss. Plenty of time. There's no rush. Again, when he sits down, spread out. You see the flying rocks coming in? Make sure that you're blocking. Don't get cocky. You will not get away with it. If you get caught, eggs on your face. Now, at this point in time, you can see he's only got 6 million health left. It's pretty much one way or the other on this one you execute it all the way through or if he sits down he's not quite dead yet i would spread out and block and continue as normal if he's down to one million health and the damage isn't that high you want to spread out for another phase now the next phase three more pad sections again very very simple same groups as before one group goes left, one group goes right, one group goes in the middle. The left side will have a chain spinner and a nullifier, which has to be stacked together and killed. And the right side will have a big army of imps, which need to be chained in and killed also. They're not very stressful, they don't hit that hard, but your tank will want to chain them in. Or maybe a DPS can put a chain on as well and help pull them all in. In the middle, however, there are a few adds, just like last time, but these do not keep respawning during their fight. The only time they will respawn is if you kill them all and the right and the left side are not finished yet. So what you do is you kill all of them but one. If you leave one alive, the rest of them will not respawn. Failing that, you can just kill them on repeat until the other sides are done. Now the bridges in front of us, there's one in front of us, one to the left and one to the right. They will not form until all the sides are done. So you need to communicate with your group when the left side is done and the right side is done, that is when you want to kill this final ad and then make all the bridges form up together. As you can see in the far distance there, which I briefly looked at, you can see there was an imp on the left-hand side, right side even. There he is getting chained in. And on the left there, you can see there's a banner waving in the background. That's one of the ads that they have to deal with. So again, wait until the other sides are finished before you kill this final ad. Otherwise, it will just respawn again. Also interrupt him because he does some nasty lightning attacks and it'll be quite embarrassing to die to this one guy. Now they're done, kill it. As you can see, the bridges have formed. Now, the next boss is actually quite simple, but very punishing. There are situations here that can make you wipe. So we're going to go over those, of course. But the key point is there are six pillars, one of which is covered in mushrooms. That will make more sense in a moment. Each pillar will have a ghost on it and you need to kill them 
To start with, there'll be three, then there'll be four, then there'll be five, and then there'll be the full amount of six, one on each pillar. And if you don't kill them by the time the boss kind of explodes, if you like, each additional ghost will increase the damage that you all take. Now, tanks generally can live through the burst, regardless of how many ghosts are there, depending on how much health they've got. DPS and healers will not survive if there is more than one ghost left alive when it explodes. Now, that is going to make a little bit more sense once we get into this fight. Now, you want to spread yourselves out so you are in a large circle around the boss. The reason you don't want to stack, because as you can see, there's all these little popping AoEs underneath our feet. They are attracted to players. They will go underneath players' feet individually. And if you stack up, they'll double up and you will die. So you need to stay spread out. As you can see, we're still getting them there as well. Do not get caught by them. Two people to each pillar to kill the ghosts. Then come back in and fight the boss. If there is a ghost left, the boss will do an explosion and everyone will take damage. But you will live so long as you have some form of minor maim or minor debuff on the boss. If you don't kill them, you will die. Every 30 seconds after the explosion is done roughly, you will get another spawn of ghosts. The first one was three, the next one will be four. Now here's a tip for you if you are experienced, you can leave one on purpose. Like I said, you can survive with one blowing up. So generally what most groups do is the mushroom pillar, the brown colored one, you can leave that ghost alone. However, for the purpose of the video, we do not do that. We actually focus on killing them all. So, this next phase here, you'll see four ghosts instead of three, which is about to come in now. Everybody goes to kill the ghosts. Two people per target. If you can help it. Also, if yours is dead, start putting executes on everybody else's because you want to help your team get them down. Once the ghosts are done, get back in the middle. Now, during this fight, of course, you want to stay away from each other. You want to make sure you've got your own space. You want to make sure you get killed for ghosts and all that good stuff. But what is the other tank doing? Because, of course, we've got one main tank holding the boss and then the other tank's doing nothing, right? Wrong. The other tank, as you can see out the far left there, is actually constantly casting Invigorating Drain because he is building up Warhorns for the damage towards the group. In the meantime, of course, he is also running around stabbing all of the ghosts. The reason for that is the major breach and major fracture, which debuffs them so we can hit them harder. So the tank is being forced into a utility position in this particular fight to just build up um, ultimates for us and help debuff small targets as they run around the room. The main tank keeps hold of this boss at all times, otherwise you will start um, firing off nasty single um, target attacks, which can actually wipe out a DPS player with one hit if you're unlucky. More ghosts, make sure you get them down, two to a target if you can help it, and then finish off all the rest. As you can see, that one there is the mushroom uh, pillar. That one you can actually leave, but we decided not to because obviously you don't take any damage from the explosion if they're all dead. As you can see here, the health is quite low now. You've got two options here. You either go for the burn, or if your group cannot, then you go for another phase of ghosts. As long as your group has enough damage to kill six ghosts when it comes to that phase, if it goes that far, as long as they can do that, there is no rush in this fight. That is the only DPS check in here, is being able to kill those ghosts. The boss itself doesn't matter how long it takes. Now, this is where it gets really tricky. Non-hard mode of the last boss does not have Storm Atronox. It does not have Meteors. And it has a little bit less health. So those are key points. No Atronox, no Meteors to block. However, we are going to demonstrate hard mode, of course. And to do that, you need to go up to here and press the crystals. There's three of them. You just smash them all and hard mode will activate. But hard mode kicks in before the boss actually comes into the room. So when you go upstairs, usually there's a big room of ads, which you have to deal with, which we will show. But since we've activated hard mode, the meteors and the atronarchs will come in straight away. So we will be dealing with those as well. Now, when we get up there, it will make a bit more sense, of course, but these are the things you have to be aware of. Now, the boss itself, we show one tactic, but there are many different ways to do it. Some spread out, some don't, but I will explain everything and why we stood in the places we stood and why we put the tanks in certain places as well. Now, as you can see, there are meteors flying out of the sky. If you get caught by those, you must block. Otherwise, you'll get stunned and you'll have to break free and it becomes a nightmare to manage your resources. 
Now, of course, if you're spread out, they're all over the place. If you're stacked, they'll all be on the group. The choice is yours as to how you manage that. But first of all, we're going to go into these ads. Overchargers are priority targets. If you get lightning, don't move. Let people move away from you. Otherwise, you end up dancing around the room and somebody dies. But bit of a tip here, heavy on the Novas. If you have Templars or Wardens, you want to make sure those Permafrost and Novas are being utilized. This can really, really hurt. So you want as much group protection as possible. Even Luna Bastion on one of the tanks or something like that will actually help because it helps give damage shields to the group and to um, maintain their survivability. Also, you'll notice that the Staminas are pumping out Vigor every so often to help the healers um, with their job as well because resin can be really, really, really tricky here. So you want to make sure you minimize deaths if you can help it. Of course, Atronarchs, by the way, do have an enrage mechanic. When they go low health, they will constantly um, kind of flip out and just pump out lightning AoE. You do need to kill them quick. Very much like the boss in Tempest Island. In fact, exactly the same. So make sure that these do die fast. Again, the next spawn, of course, there are three overcharges in this wave. There's one here, there's one to the left, and there's one at the far back. These have to be killed. So you want your tanks to pull them in as soon as possible, but watch out for the lightning. You'll see that the big circles where people have got lightning AoEs, they are not moving around the room. They are staying still and receiving the heals from the healers and the group. Make sure you don't dance. Dancing will kill everybody, so do not do it. Again, overcharges are primary focus. You must kill them. Anything else can be pulled in later. They can be dealt with later. Whatever you want to do, as far as the pull is concerned, your call, but you have to kill the overcharges. Any Atronarchs that go low health must die also. Again, remember, you have to block the Meteors. Now, when the boss comes in, the boss has a nasty effect called Chain Lightning. Now, what that does is whoever she is facing, she will decide to pick a target and zap them with lightning. That target will then chain that lightning onto another character and so on and so forth, meaning that more people close to that person that got zapped will die. Now, there is a 180 degree line of sight in front of that boss. As you can see here, the tank is in front of the boss but keeping back a little bit and we're behind the boss stacked and keeping back from the boss a bit as well. That gap that we've divided between us means that if the tank does get chain lightning and he will be the only one that gets it, he's too far away to zap us. And the line, if we don't cross it, she can't zap us either. Now both tanks are of course the other side of the boss, they're not with us. And that means that the tank can pull the Atronarchs in close, the close tank, while taunting the boss while the other tank grabs these axes that just now spawned. They will hit very, very hard. They have a stupid amount of health, more than the boss in fact, so don't bother trying to kill them, but the tank needs to walk away with those and just fight with them. Throughout the fight, there will be more and more and more axes. So, if you have low DPS in your group, one, that's not a problem, don't worry, you can still complete this, but you will end up with more axes. So that means you need a even more experienced tank, basically. So at this point in time, we've got one tank at the back holding on to the axes that spawn, and there can be a lot of them by the way, sometimes up to seven. They've got another tank in front holding on to the boss and the Atronarchs. The Atronarchs are dying to area of effect by the way, but you can of course focus them if you want without crossing the line. And in the meantime, we've got Meteors coming down on the group that we block. They are fast paced, they do come down quite a bit. If you want to spread out a little bit, then of course you can, but I wouldn't recommend it for the most part because there are other things going on in the room. The Atronarchs have to be taunted very, very quickly, by the way, as the tank, because they can one-shot a DPS with a nasty, um, not heavy attack as such, but a big, big hit. Now, as you can see, there's also a mage reflection, a conjured reflection. That is your primary focus above all, unless an Atronarch is having a fit. You must kill those. They do nasty area of effect damage over time, and if you don't kill them quick enough, you will get another one and another one, and they will overlap and you will die. So, adds are key here. You must kill them. The Atronarchs will continue to spawn throughout the fight, but you do need to get them down, otherwise you're going to get overwhelmed. As you can see, there's loads of little tiny AoEs as well. Not just the Meteors, but there's loads of little tiny ones. They are actually bombs. So, if you are a Magicka DPS and you put on a shield and stand on one at full health, you will make it explode, you will get rooted for a couple seconds, and that one will be gone. Or, if you are a tank, for example, and you have Mist Form, and you just put it on and run through them, they'll all blow up. That will actually clear some space a little bit, but don't panic too much because even as you can see here, they're not really in our way. We're not moving in or out of their um, places at the moment. But if they do get in your way, you may have to get rid of them. 
Now be very careful when the conjured reflections appear. You can see there's one on our left now. That's not a problem. We do have to switch our DPS over to that side, especially range DPS, but he's not a problem for us. However, they can spawn in the middle of the fight. That's perfect because that's where all our damage is. But you do have to make sure that you step back a bit if that happens because the spread and AoE as they enter the room will knock you backwards. And there is a massive circle on our right side that you saw there. That's a black hole. And there's one spreading behind us. Based on where we're stacked, it can't actually reach us properly because we can go closer to the boss. But if a mage pops out from the middle at the same time as one of those is there, you could get blasted into it. So you've got to be very, very careful. As you can see there, both of our healers just copped it. So be really careful there. If that happens, don't panic. Don't run around like a headless chicken. Just get the reses in quickly and get back into your original position. The reason we're stacking is just to avoid as much chain lightning as possible. Now we are on a little bit of a domino effect because the atros are low health and having their little lightning effect, little fit that they're having, and you need to get rid of them. If we don't get rid of them, we're dead. Apart from that, it's pretty much rinse, repeat. Avoid the bombs, avoid the black holes block the meteors, kill the Atronarchs, and kill the Reflections. Now there is a Reflection here at the far right hand side. Range DPS can reach it, but do not, do not go out of your comfort zone to get to them. It's really, really dangerous if you do that. What I mean by that is don't cross the line. As you can see here, we've actually got two. If you don't kill them, you will get overlapping damage and it's really, really messy. So make sure above all that you focus these reflections down. You have to kill them. Even if the boss's health is low, kill the reflections. If you don't, there is a strong possibility that they will still hang around during execute and you won't survive for the most part. They're very, very dangerous indeed. You take a lot of damage at execute and this is where um, there is a mechanic at low health what you do have to pay attention to and this is where you will have to apply your damage as well So be very very careful try not to lose too many um, Players during this phase don't panic when the health is low just follow the mechanics keep doing what you're doing as you can see here Our DPS have gone to the left a little bit They've gone to watch out from the black holes But we're not getting caught by them because of where we're standing the tank hasn't come too close to us from the opposing side, so we don't get Chain Lightning, and we can quite comfortably block the mechanics as they come in and deal with the mage on the left without actually running around the room. You can go over to them sometimes, depending on where they are, but if you cross that 180 degree line, you're stuffed, so don't force that to happen. Now, at low health, finish off any reflections, finish off any Atronarchs unless they've got maximum health. Then, you want to push out to 15%. When she goes down to 15%, make sure that someone is throwing out some heals because you're going to get slammed onto the ground. So this is where you want all of your Staminas to kind of synchronize throw out a Vigor while the healing springs and other heals are coming in. As you can see now, we pushed one of the Atronarchs down at low health and that was really, really risky. So 15%, she slams the ground three times, gets rid of all the AoE in the room and usually gets rid of the reflections, but there's still one up as you can see, and she heals back up to 20% health. Now this is a stack and burn. Everyone has to pull their A game out here and do as much damage as possible to get her down. While that big, big orb above her head is closing in doing massive fire damage to you and the group. Now as you can see our health isn't going down very much at all and this is because I have instructed all of the tanks to pump out as many igneous shields and bone shields as possible while Novas are coming in from everybody else, Permafrost is coming in from a healer and of course we are utilizing Vigor alongside of our healing coming in from the heals as well. So we've mixed everything up for as much mitigation and survivability as possible so that is not stressful. Sometimes you might have to add more mitigation to your group to make those things happen regardless of your DPS output. Just remember of course, non-hard mode, there's no Atronarchs, there's no Meteors, you can just stack it and burn it just like we did there and you can actually kill it a lot, lot quicker. So hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Don't panic if you don't have loads and loads of damage, just follow the mechanics. That's the point in the series in the first place. So first of all, thank you all very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Also, if you'd like to support outside the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zyanodegaming.com, where all the written guides are, including this one. Don't forget, I also live stream at 10 p.m. UK time onwards every single day on Twitch, unless I say otherwise on Twitter. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.